Yeah, we do liquid propane for lift, and we've got a Rotax engine there for inflating our control surfaces and creating forward momentum. Petroleum products, huh? Yep. Gee, that's, that's a surprise. Yeah, surprise. Yeah, that up. Oh, I don't think you're surprised. Yeah. I mean, a great big green thing like this, creating a carbon footprint <laughs> that says don't create carbon footprints or embrace anything that does. That's just kind of unusual, especially in this world. What industry are you going to protect? I'm curious. So, oil and gas. Uh, We're interested in phasing out fossil fuels. So, Chris so goes on side and knows we're about ready to stop expanding uh, fossil fuel drilling. Um, here in Tail Texas flight number and um, 5 8 and so CJ, tracking flight aware and flight radar. Plane is over Burt Button Willow, just north of the have so uh, we're, to, we're advocating that he does it in a way that yeah, sets up uh, a fund response. that will help protect yeah, the workers. Where's the funding for the Who's funding that? I'm curious, where's the money coming from? Yeah, we're advocating that he make a plan. It's hanging on the money's got to come from somewhere. Right. right. Money doesn't fall out of the sky. Right. Unicorns and don't fly. We think it's up to our leaders to figure out what, what to do in order to protect the communities that are being polluted by that. Um, and Actually, the industry right now contributes hundreds of billions of dollars to this state. There isn't a school, there isn't a government uh, program one that does not benefit from our industry, from the petroleum industry. The petroleum industry, if you think about it, has come a very long way as far as getting one more mile per gallon out of a gallon of gasoline or one more BTU to heat a home. How do you heat your home? Oh, I see. Right. Natural gas. Of course you do. Everybody does. And there are so many of these people that say we've got competing technology. Of course, we all know that wind and solar are already yeah, yeah. government funded. They're, they're, they're being backed up, they're being oh, subsidized by the yeah. same people that are paying for a gallon of gas, or like you, that are paying a pg and &E bill. Okay. When you plug an electric car, electric car in the state of California, what is it, 86% of all our electricity is generated by the use of fossil fuels right now? So it's interesting that they would, they would claim to have a zero carbon footprint when in point of fact, the, they're more than likely utilizing electricity that's produced by the use of fossil fuels. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why we're advocating for policies that will move toward cleaner energy for the grid and making sure that we're looking at a transition that moves from fossil fuel dependence to cleaner energy. Do you don't think that's happening right now? It can only happen as long as resources are available. Resources, just so everybody's clear, the government has no money. The government has no money. It's the people's money. Every nickel that is used by government to do anything and everything comes out of the pocket okay, so of the uh, customer, the taxpayer. It doesn't fall out of the sky. So it's earned by somebody. The private sector is what stimulates the economy. Government draws money out of the economy. Government is dependent upon private sector. So just so we know, no matter what the government or the governor wants to do, he has no money. Government doesn't yeah, create money. Right now in the state of California, full, but it's just our pension fund is $1.4 trillion dollars underfunded yeah, I'm not gonna really currently. So to, to hope that there's a big chunk of change somewhere that the governor can tap into to offset yeah, the negative effects the of the closure of a vital industry like oil and gas, that's kind of a dream. Yeah, that's a big dream. Yeah, well, ready. we know that what the science says. Do you have radio? Oh, you don't have radio. That's what the climate science is saying right now is that we cannot move forward enough. Uh, we need to expand our pull up more. That's current interpretation of currently available data. Right? That's, that's the science. Yep. And so, like I said, we're advocating to make sure that. So there's a yellow strap in the trailer that we also need. I can go get it if someone else wants to do this. We are advocating for a plan to protect those workers as we transition away from fossil fuels.
so we think everybody in the petroleum industry is going to go into the solar power industry or wind. Both of those which are... them to be able to go into a career that they... Okay, both of those industries are subsidized by the people right now. Lots of people, including those that are in the, in the oil and gas industry, globally, for heaven's sake, globally. So to think that at some point in time, that alternative energy source is actually going to become competitive on an open market, and not only that, but it's going to become so profitable that it can offset the cost of doing away with a vital industry. That's a big leap, don't I you mean, think? We know that right now, jobs in solar and wind are growing. They're, that's the job market that is... Uh, Dependent upon the subsidies, right? Dependent upon subsidies. Subsidies all go away, then all of a sudden, their competitive edge is gone. I mean, same with the oil industry as well. So, well, we, we know that both these industries are both providing energy. <laughs> one is creating, continuing to create more and more jobs. We're actually Ooh, creating one in Hundreds of billions of We're starting here money. In you can start here in California. Right. Okay, of course. Kern County at one point in time was the largest oil and gas producing county in the continental United States. Right. Continental United States. Right. We started producing oil, actually utilizing oil in Kern County around 1857. Okay, around 1900, we were actually act actively drilling. Uh, they were producing oil here in Kern County before they did in Pennsylvania, for heaven's sakes. And we've been doing it doing it responsibly and successfully for all those years, creating all those jobs and all that positive cash flow, supporting education and all the programs that people yeah, depend upon. We are, we're not anti-worker. We are wanting to advocate for the solutions that are needed based on climate science and do it in a way that protects communities and protects industries. That's, that's an interesting concept. Interesting concept. However, one excludes the other. If you need to be able to have everything in this world, that's a neat concept and a neat argument. Unfortunately, math has always been math, and, and that part of it I don't see changing. As far as transitioning, that's happening. It's, it's been happening for, for many, many years. I mean, now you can get a full-size pickup truck that can tow a trailer and gets 23 miles to the gallon. Some diesels get 30, you know. So we have come a long way, and a lot of that is R&D that the oil and gas industry has helped with. So you eliminate that funding source for that R&D, you actually slow down the process as far as making it a uh, more efficient product. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I know we're not quite agreeing here, <laughs> but I just want to explain where we're coming from. Okay, um, and I'm and I'm explaining where I'm coming from, sure. too. Yeah. And the fact that where I'm coming it. from helped you get this here today. So at, as, as much as you all would love, I got to believe to have a solar powered I don't know what, the fact of the matter is the best, most efficient, currently available technology is propane, right? Would you pull it again? That is a weed. Okay, all right. Well, it's a beautiful place. We love Taft. We welcome everybody here. Thank you very much. Uh, everybody's got to have a dream. Okay? <laughs> yeah, You're entitled we, to your dream. We wanna, yes, we want to share that dream of, you know, clean, clean future, healthy communities, healthy industries. We, we have a clean community. We're very proud of our community, and it's safe, and it's hardworking, and it's self-sustaining. So uh, glad you came by to visit. Hope you all have a nice day. Thanks so much. Yeah. Adding heat. Dave, let me talk to you. Take it easy. All right. You have a nice day, sir. All right. Be safe, gentlemen. You too. Always. So. So what do you think, Mr. Mayor? Well, uh, the irony is that I guess you could call this the hypocrite blimp. Blimp advocating for the complete elimination of the oil and gas industry, go green, uh, global warming, and yet the most efficient way for it to get here is by the use of hydrocarbons. And they heat their homes with hydrocarbons. They drive their vehicles with hydrocarbons. Their makeup, their clothing, their eyeglasses, all based on hydrocarbons. So, like I say, everybody deserves a dream. I'm sure they would love to have this thing run on unicorn farts, but it doesn't. 
and it won't. They call the police department because they're a little worried. Everybody's, you know, scrutinizing what's going on here. But, uh, well, they said in other think... places, in other places, not here in Taft, no. that people have threatened to shoot it down. But Taft, I told them, is a very welcoming place. They have nothing to worry about. The beauty of Taft and the people that inhabit Taft, they know there's two sides to every discussion. We won't even call this an argument. We'll call this a discussion. And the possibility exists. However, uh, you can't blink your eyes. I Dream of Genie was a wonderful show, and I enjoyed it, but it's not reality. Yeah. We will not shoot anybody down, nor will we threaten them with physical violence if they want to come and deliver a message because the First Amendment is just as important to us as it is anywhere. However, we will take the opportunity to discuss the other side of the coin, and hopefully they understand that. Thanks, Dave. Yes, sir.